What's up, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll show you how to install and use Android virtual machines on your computer. It's really simple and this isn't going to be the normal Bluestacks-esque video that you may come to expect. It gives you far more control, customization, etc. as we'll be using Google's official tools, including Android Studio. So to begin, we need to go ahead and download and install Android Studio if you don't already have it. Head across to developer.android.com slash studio and then simply download Android Studio. Read through the agreement, accept and download. Then click on it to open it up when it's done downloading and we'll follow through with the normal installation. So next, leave both of these checked. Most importantly, Android Virtual Device. Next, next and finally install. I already have it installed, so I'll be canceling out of this and opening up Android Studio. Upon opening it up for the first time, it'll import and do some other things, and then ask you if you'd like to use the default configuration. Leave it as is and get to the screen here. Choose the type of setup you want for Android Studio. You can go to custom if you'd like to customize it more, or you can leave it as standard. I'll go to custom, where I can view exactly what I can change. I'll choose the dark theme, and on the component setup page here, Simply make sure that Android Virtual Device is checked, or of course it's already got installed next to it. Android SDK should also be checked, as well as the latest API. And if you can, anything down here regarding performance. Android Emulator Hypervisor Driver for AMD processors is what I have, though you may have HAXM I think it is for Intel CPUs. Anyways, leaving everything basically as is, this is the standard setup for the normal installation. I'll click next, next, and with everything queued up for download, click finish. Of course, if you downloaded it from the website, instead of using something like Visual Studio to install it, like I did, you may not have this screen over here, or even the choice to customize components as much as I have. I just didn't really want to install it a second time. So your steps may be slightly different. And if you see something like this, heading across to the link, you may be greeted with something like this here, saying Hyper-V must be disabled. If you see this, don't worry too much, we'll just click finish. Just means that you won't get certain optimizations. Anyways. We're now on this home page here. I can click more actions and then choose AVD manager. This is the Android virtual device manager. I'll click create virtual device and punch in some settings here. I'll be emulating a TV, so I'll choose TV 1080p. I'll click next. And from here, we can download and install specific system images using recommended 86 images or other images here. I'll download the latest normal Android TV one, which is currently R. I'll accept next and then wait for the download to go through and complete. And then I'll simply click finish. Now our Android has been set up. As you can see, there's no longer a download button next to it. Select it, click next, give it a name, change some extra settings about it if you'd like. But for me, I'll go show advanced settings and I'll give it say a couple more cores, maybe some more RAM, and that seems about good. I'll now click finish and our Android device will be added to the screen here. Clicking the play button next to it will simply launch up the emulator, as simple as that. Now, of course, if this is your first time logging in, it can take quite some time, but we'll eventually get there. And there we have it. We're now running Android TV OS, and of course you can install apps, etc, etc. If you wanted to install a normal Android, you'd have the operating system installed and working exactly as you had hoped. Of course, the actual buttons for the Android can be found on the right hand side. You're able to use touchscreen functionality by simply clicking around and heading up to the search bar up here. I can, of course, type using my physical keyboard. As simple as that. Now, of course, you'll need to sign into Google Play to download apps, etc. But from here on out, it's basically just your normal Android emulator, though not running something like Bluestacks. It's running on your computer using the Android Virtual Device Manager, and in my opinion, is a lot better. Though, of course, if you're going to be playing games and things like that, you shouldn't be using these. You should be using something like Bluestacks, where it has easily bindable controls. You can use arrow keys and things like that to emulate touching the physical screen itself. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!